In this episode, we will talk about the work of compression by a gas sample. When work is done on the system by compressing the gas sample, net amount of work flows from the surroundings into the system. And so the work of compression is calculated exactly the same way as we would have calculated the work of expansion, except the opposing pressure is in the opposite direction. So we, we would say the work done in a compression process is equal to minus P opposing times the final volume minus the initial volume in a one-step compression process. So W equals to P opposing times V1 minus V2, where V1 is the final volume, V2 is the initial volume. Remember how we have reversed the numbers on the initial and final states, meaning that we will use exactly the same diagram as we have used in the previous session, except that we are now traveling from the previous final state to previous initial state. So we have simply reversed the nomenclature used here. That's because we are compressing. We want to compare it with the expansion work. Now we have to keep in mind that it is not simply a reversal of expansion process. That's because the pressure required to compress the gas all the way to P1 would imply that the opposing pressure be greater than or equal to P1. Now graphically on the right side we show this very clearly. You have a PV plot, P on the y-axis, V on the x-axis, and P2, V2 is our initial state. P1, V1 is our final state. So if I want to compress the volume V2 all the way to V1, in a single step, I need to apply a pressure that is equal to P1 or greater than P1 on the gas sample. If the opposing pressure is less than P1, the compression will stop in the middle somewhere. Therefore, the opposing pressure has to be at least equal to P1 or larger, preferably. So, coming back to the expression for W equals to minus P prime opposing pressure times V1 minus V2 in a one step. Now I can write that in a two step process where an intermediary step of compression is utilized. Then W equals to minus P prime opposing multiplied by V prime minus V2 where V prime is the intermediary volume and P prime is the pressure initially applied to achieve the intermediate state minus P opposing times V1 minus V prime. P opposing now is going to be at least equal to P1 or larger. And V1 is the final volume, which is our V1, and V prime is the intermediary volume. So this is a two-step compression with an intermediate stage as shown in this diagram. So we start with volume V2 and compress it with a P prime opposing to V prime volume. And from V prime, we compress it further in the second step 
back to V1. So the purple rectangle corresponds to the work of compression during the first step. The blue rectangle corresponds to the work of compression in the second step. So the total work is the integral, is the sum of the two rectangles. In a very similar fashion, we can calculate the work of compression where you have infinitesimal step compression taking place. And so that is simply an integral of PDV. So minus 2 to 1. Now the steps we have reversed, initial and final states. So integral 2 to 1, P opposing times dV. And except now we need to be very careful and say P opposing has to be slightly greater than the pressure of the gas. Otherwise, the gas will not be compressed by the opposing pressure. So the opposing pressure at every stage has to be slightly higher than the gas pressure so that we could compress it. And therefore, the opposing pressure is changing continuously from the P2 plus dP to P1 plus dP in the final state. And therefore, integral of this is written as equal to minus nRT ln V1 over V2. And we have done a, an approximation here saying that we have an ideal gas and the pre, P opposing is equal to the P of the gas itself. And that is given by nRT over V, as we have done in the case of expansion. So the work of compression in a one-step process is the largest and the two-step is less and infinitesimal step is the minimal work of compression. And the work of compression in the infinitesimal step is shown in the third diagram below and as you can compare the areas of work the smallest in the infinitesimal step compression process. Now we can do a very similar comparison of the isothermal expansion work, its path dependence. So in a single step isothermal expansion minus P opposing V2 minus V1, that is the graph corresponding to that, the blue rectangle represents the work of expansion under isothermal conditions for one step. The two-step work of expansion has two terms for the W as we discussed before and corresponds to the two rectangles blue and red. The net work of two-step expansion is the sum of the areas of the red and the blue triangle, blue rectangles. The work of expansion in a continuous inf inf infinitesimal expansion is the integral PDV and where we have appropriately substituted for pressure and using the ideal gas law, we write that in terms of volume. Integral of that provides the area under the curve of the PV plot and therefore we are now just as we compared the isothermal compression work on the previous slide we have now compared the isothermal expansion work. In both cases we show that the work depends on the path. Again work is a path function. In summary we say that work of compression is always positive. That's because we are compressing the gas, therefore transferring certain amount of work from the surroundings into the system. Note that when we compress, the mass above the piston is lowered. Therefore, certain amount of potential energy is now stored in the compressed gas. That's 
work is being transported across the boundary into the system and being stored as compressed work, compressive work. Masses are lowered in the surroundings during the compression process. So by examining the position of the piston, we can determine whether the process is an expansion or a compression process. So a very simple experiment can be carried out to do either the compression or the expansion experiments. Work destroyed during the compression depends on the path used. Work destroyed because certain amount of work is lost in the surroundings, gained by in the system, and therefore we refer to this as the work that is destroyed in the surroundings. And the, that work depends on the path. As we have shown, single step compression is the highest amount of work destroyed, two step compression, less amount is destroyed, and infinitesimal step compression, the minimal amount of work is destroyed. And this slide highlights the problems and examples and would we'll ask you to write two examples of daily life involving work of compression and write two examples of daily life involving work of expansion. This is again relating your experiences on a daily basis with the principles and the concepts of work and how the work that we discuss in the laboratory is related in a daily life event. The problem is uh, the problems that I would like you to work out at least a 10 problems from any book that involve work of expansion or work of compression and you can work this out by yourself or with the help of others. It needs to be unique for you, for each assignment.